So, are we ready for another beer? Yes. Sure. Serious beer is you Yes. The Dos Equis? The Dos Equis. The Dos Equis. Is that like some uh, it, it, it's, duct tape on it, It's a duct tape to hide the thing uh, because when I bought I thought, it, I was like, when I bought it. Yeah, like, <laughs> I thought it was part of the I thing. Didn't I was like, it. that's going to be such a cool that's ass. A cool it's duct a little tape. piggy, little piggy duct tape. I bought it to hide the bottle cap. You bought that just for that? Well, I stole it from the kid. It's oh. the point is I bought it to hide the bottle cap because I did not realize it when I purchased this big boy. But they have the name of the brewery right on the lid. Sweet. Oh yeah. So I didn't want spoilers. I've had that happen before too, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we know what beer it is. True. Ronald. Oh yeah. Well, I got these from um, from Lindsay's mom, so we have the cool official old bottle opener. official bottle openers now. I'm glad we got to use them already. Hell yeah. So how did we describe and rate that last beer? Because oh, we, we didn't. didn't even do that yet. Uh, right. I was going to say. I like the like Einstock. Little... I did too. Um, I had one the other day, and I- I'm giving it a good four. It's a good cold beer. I'll give it a three. I think a three and a half. I'll give it a three, but I feel like the more of it I drank, I would like. Um, don't you? Don't you do it. So it was dark. Very dark. Very stouty. Dark stout. Technically, it's a porter, but yes. I well, but it was a stout porter, you know. Don't you? I, okay. I I feel like coffee and licorice, black I got, licorice. I got coffee. I didn't get the licorice. I got a lot of like, um, oh, what do you call it? Like biscuity kind of notes myself. Biscuity. Biscuit. Um. S- son of a biscuit. This one's very dark too. I can say that's about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there wasn't a major profile to it. It was so pretty, I, I, it I, was very it was flavorful. It was good, but just there wasn't a lot to it. So like I was wanting to theme this up, <laughs> but um, it just wasn't going to work out for what I picked up over the weekend. Okay. That's but the, oh, okay. the 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 iron stock I got excited about. I could have themed this up a little bit better. That iron stock I was like I got to bring that shit. It smells so, nice. It smells sweet. Now for the mysterious beerious. Ooh. I don't know. It smells kind of strawberry cherry. Something. I was going to say like cherry maybe. Mm. Kind of put me in mind of like there was a Sam Adams cherry at one time. Not the one Zach had. But the like, just like a one that I tried a long time ago. We still have a couple of beers in the fridge from him, don't we? Uh huh. I was thinking about that today. So, um, the slight hint here is I got this from the international section at the jungle as well, and it is very much St. Patty's themed. It's like an Irish red. Okay, yeah, I mean, it does look um, red in the light. light looks red through it um it does makes it have yeah red had some of these over the weekend and i'm like yeah yeah excellent good. i like it it is good it has like a little bit of bitterness to it mm-hmm. i think the last one did too kind of didn't it? yeah the last, the last one had like a coffee bitter to it yeah this one is like I don't like a cherry amaretto type, but not with not creamy. It tastes like a just a bitter amaretto flavor is what I'm getting. I feel like I'm way off because Ron's laughing. Because because it's like cherry. That, that's what I'm getting, like the cherry. Um, it reminds you, me of like amaretto and coffee, I guess. Oh, when I when I pull the uh, the koozie off, you guys are kind of probably gonna kick me off the podcast. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it's probably just like, was it Killian's? No. Better than that. Oh, it's just something. Guinness. <sighs> you are correct. Is it really? <laughs> I've never had a Guinness. Really? Dude, yeah, I've never the had last time I drank Guinness, I thought it was fucking disgusting. Guinness extra stout. That's pretty good. And I, like I actually it. do like this now. It's weird. Like It's funny that's in the, um, the international section. Well, oh. Guinness is freaking made in... Uh, it's Irish. Yeah, but I mean, it's <clears throat> something we've always had here. Dude, Uh-oh. I can remember having a Guinness when I was like in my early 20s. And I was like, man, this is nasty. Like, I did not like it at all. And uh, remember the first this time. This is good. <laughs> remember the first time good. I ever had a Guinness was that little bar that was uh, used to be between uh, Hastings and the Target, where I worked at back in the day, the Hastings. 
And I remember having it. I remember telling you, that beer was good. It had a woody taste. And I laughed because I said Ron drank woody or you yeah. know, had sounds woody, about basically right. giving head woody. <laughs> made a lot of dick sucking references. Yeah, But it sounds... smells... So it smells kind of... It's cigarish. And so it's like, you know, like a that. Swisher Sweet type flavor is know, maybe like, the, like a, the cherry Swisher Sweet is what I'm getting from it. I'm sure that's nothing to do with what the beer actually is. So you've never actually had a Guinness? Huh. I figured I'd go for this because, well, it's, it's traditional Irish St. Paddy's Day drinking as you can get outside of taking a Bud Light and dumping green yeah, food coloring. Because I was going to say, you could dump a lot of green food coloring in there. The only thing, the foam, the head would turn green. So, like... When I used to clean rooms in the hotel, I found, I believe it was a four pack of like cans of Guinness. And I was like, cool, I'll take these home with me. Sarah, and drink them. Right. And I was probably like 20 at the time. I probably wasn't even old enough to drink it. I might have been 21 or 22. I don't I know. I think you were probably 21 because I, you were living with me. And I know you were 21 and shortly before we moved in together. And they tasted like ass. And see, I remember you getting them because I remember you seeing them and I thought it was weird because they had the ball in them. And um, oh, yeah, I, was, I, I, I remember like every bit. That was like the, that was like, like I don't the even nitro, know if I tried it. That was like the nitro Guinness shit. Right. I, I don't. Oh, that's probably why it tastes like shit because I drank it right out of the can. <laughs> I, I don't, right. I, I don't remember. If I tried it, but I remember like you dumped it out and I smelled the can and it just smelled god awful. It was like way too strong. Yeah, it was nasty. And I remember you saying that, and that, I think that was shortly after you actually started drinking like beer because I was like I was trying to drink. You had like some bush or something. I was like, dude, how do you fucking drink this? And I I couldn't drink it. And then you were just like, I oh, just like I don't know. You were able to, like you would just take big gulps of like the bush light or something yeah. like that. And so you were you could drink that. And so you're almost trying to drink this Guinness, and it's, like, way different. Yeah, because it was, like, I hated beer. Like, I used to not drink beer. I used to not really drink real at all for a long time, but then I started drinking, like, vodka and, like, Hawaiian punch and shit like that. Shoo! Which was a mistake. <laughs> and I didn't drink vodka for a very long time. That, that sounds that. like a great way of something that sounds delicious until you drink like a gallon of it and then you're vomiting your feet off for the next day and a half. Yeah, the next day was not a very pretty sight. And um, it wasn't pretty for pretty much anybody else that drank it either. That's great. <laughs> Is it getting foggy outside or dark? Is it dark. dark. Foggy. Oh, no. no. But I feel like this was a bit of troll because Guinness really isn't a craft beer, but... Nah, it's it, all right. It, it was different. I did not realize you had not had a Guinness before. Never had it. Huh. Um, but it's... It, I and That would be a good beer to sit and smoke a cigar with. Like, I would totally yeah. have a cigar with that. I could see that. Because um, it's the more, of a, the more of it I drink, the more it tastes like I've been smoking a cigar. And, like, the more I smell the cigar... Francis brought over a six pack of this uh, Saturday night, and I saw this on the shelf. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna fuck with them. That's now great. I see like why you put the tape on though, because I'm like, because we would have been like, what? Fuck you. <laughs> I yep. definitely did the brewery thing, you know, like where it, it had like the cap on it, and you could see it. And right, like, but oh. it, it wouldn't matter because I, pro- I, I bet when you did that, I never even once looked or noticed or saw like what brewery it was from. But with this, we would have said. Hey, something's up. Guinness isn't craft. Did they? Did they make? Did they start making craft beer? That'd be fucking cool, man. I also feel like Guinness for me, because Guinness, you know, it's an extra stout. It's a good place to get a uh, when I drink a, a stout beer. It's a good place for me to kind of as a gauge for you know what is a commercial stout. Right. And so therefore, this is you know the most commercially popular stout out there. This obviously. Is an extra stout. So that being said, it's kind of like, you know, compare other stouts and dark beers off this for what is popular with the rest of the world that's not into craft. Right on. So. Dude, so I feel like I had like funny stories to tell you guys. I, I, I like you, cannot think. You of, you said you had something like a scenario. Yeah. Kind oh, of like a would, would, you rather, would you rather rather type of deal, but I was just gonna save it for if we like really had nothing to talk about. Which is almost but, right now. Yeah, kind of. Dude, though, um, my friend Lindsay. So, okay, so a girl on Facebook that we knew when we were kids lost her cat like a month ago or something. And she put it like on her like personal page and then she put it on um, 
the Dark County Lost Pets page or whatever, and my friend Lindsay has another friend that lived near where she was talking about, and she's like, hey, would you have you seen this cat like around your house or anything? And she's like, no, and this like this cat was lost for like a month or something, and Lindsay's like. Um, She's like a cat lady to the extreme. Like she runs a cat shelter in her house. The, the cat um, mafia. What, what, what would you call it? I forget what you, you called it. Something. But probably something like that. That sounds familiar. Cat like, mafia. Um, like oh shit, what was it? Not to interrupt you, but it's the um, cat trafficking. Yeah, he, the cat trafficking. It's cat like human, human trafficking, trafficking but with cats. cats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. So uh, anyway, like she was going to Troy to get cat food. Like, she, every time I talk, like, she's, just like, driving somewhere. She, like, video messaged me. She's like, yeah, I'm heading here to get cat food, like, every time just That's about. Great. But, like, she was driving back from Troy from getting cat food, and she missed, she was going to turn on 721 off of 36 to head home, and she missed her turn because she was, like, daydreaming or whatever. And she gets further down, and she sees this cat run across the road. She's like, I think that was the cat. <laughs> And, like, so she stops and, like, calls the girl that we knew and um, was, like, out looking for this cat, you know, and, like, couldn't find it. And this girl came and she's, like, calling for it or whatever and then ends up finding this fucking cat and it ended up being the cat. That's funny. And I was, like, dude, that's, that's awesome. fucking crazy, that's right? That's fucking awesome. I like it. Lindsay, like, video How far away from the house was it? From... Where it got lost at? Well, she said it got lost... Like around 36 in Bears Mill, so I think it was like in the same area, maybe. But it was like Lindsay video messaged me like right after it happened. She's like, I gotta tell you this. And she was like bawling and stuff. She's like, I needed that so bad. I needed something good to happen. That, that, that's that, awesome. That, like realistically, it. that's a hell of a win, you know? Right? I was like, and then I see this girl like post on her page. She's like, my cat's home. And she's like, this wonderful lady that's great. called me. I was like, dude, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. That's awesome. That's just, that's a, I like when there's just like weird stories like that. Like, oh, I'm doing this and I'm just in my own head. Fuck, I turned the wrong way. And just, right. You know. It's like almost like it was meant to happen because like I wasn't supposed to come this way. Right, exactly. If it weren't for this, then this, and it's and Hey, like, there's that lost cat I just saw. That's awesome. But. And like a cat lady of all people, like the biggest fucking cat lady I've ever right. met in my lifetime. Right. Of and, all people. And, and that's really cool. Which So that puts me in mind of like, so. I think this was um, a Dr. Joe Dispenza thing. So he's like big on like manifesting and doing different shit to like get different shit. And that's what he, he puts in um, like, like he uses that as an example. It's like if you're trying to change things about your life and you you go the same path every day and you, you don't like, and it's, even if you're like go, doing the same thing, you have the same routine in your home before you leave the house and you're sticking to a very strict routine that's you basically manifesting the same thing over and over mm-hmm. again. You're, you're not manifesting a different outcome, but if you were to do something in different order and then you're taking an alternate route to work, you're telling the universe that you want something different to happen. So all these doors will open up and different shit will happen. Well, that's kind of like what she did. That's funny because I've actually been thinking about stuff like that this week because I'm sitting at work and I'm just doing the same thing over and over and over all day. And I'm like, man, this sucks. Like it, I'm, you know, I make decent money. I can pay my bills and that's great. And like the, um, uh, just knowing that I'm getting this paycheck and you know, like the, I can't think of the fucking word I'm trying. I can't think of the word I need, but anyway, like just knowing that I'm getting, the money content. and yeah, it's content. It's safe. It's you know, and it's, it's safe. Nice. There's no stress. There's no worries. Yeah. But there's I mean, nothing there's stress. But I mean, not that much because I know what I'm usually. Know you know the stress, predictable though. path. Yeah, you know like, the stress. You know something's gonna fuck up at work. Okay, so A B C D is right, probably basically. gonna happen. And it's like if I change something up, like I can stay there, but then still be doing something different, you know, and like maybe something would work out, you know, it's like, or I could start bidding on different jobs or try something new and get out of my comfort zone, you know, but it's like the predictability of it's kind of nice too. And it's like, 
like I'm fighting. It's almost like I'm fighting with myself. It's like there's a duality right. inside of me, you know. But it's like I need to. I think I need to like try something different. So it'd be if, scary if you do the same predictable path. You know what to expect because you just you know what's going to happen. It's kind of like you know one of those things like you get a new car and then you start seeing that particular car and that mm. color of car everywhere. It's, you weren't thinking about it before. You, those cars are always there, but because you were now open up to it and you see them everywhere, where it's kind of like you, you, if you're doing the same predictable path, you know what to expect. So you're only looking for what you know is going to happen. But if you do a, you make different choices, the predictability isn't there, so you don't know what to look for. So you have your eyes open to everything. Right. You basically have shutters in the other path because you just you shut off to every other thing. You're just not going to notice it because you you're going to notice what you know to expect. Is basically what that is. I think there's also a thing, something about memory too. Like if you do something different, you're going to remember that more than the same thing. Like right. you know, every day you get up at you know. 5 a.m. Every day you put on your shoes, your coat, your shirt, the same, you know, not the same thing, but do you remember the shirt you wore the day before? Do you remember that day in detail? No, because it all gets blurred out because the brain gets used to like patterns and it's the same thing. Pilot and muscle, right? Yeah. It's it's like you're not, you're using the same pathways of brain Mm -hmm. constantly, basically. And it's easy to do. Right. And when you're sitting there talking about, you know, looking for something different and a change, you know that's scary because you have to learn new things but in the same breath you're learning learning, new things i like learning new things and i learn new things all the time like outside of work utilizing it but it's like you know i could be i'm doing this like eight to ten hours every day like five days a week you know and it's like i could be doing something which i also think about it like if you're doing something even if you do love it like eventually it's just going to be a job, you know? So it's like, what's, is that good? You know, it's like, okay, I have this passion for this thing, but you know, eventually it's going to be a routine and it's just going to be another job again. And like those people that turn their hobby into their job sort of a thing. Kind of. So I feel like a person who turns their hobby into a job will always love it. Maybe. Because it's their hobby. And I think there's a big difference if you like, say man i'm really lucky i get to do this every day and make money you say you get to do it instead of saying i have to do this like oh i have like if if you turned your passion you're like man i really used to love this until like you know have to do it every fucking day oh i have to do this no i get to do it like man i'm excited i'm lucky i get to do it i think you have a different like a your your attitude shifts about it and so like if you shift like the more you shift your attitude one way the more it's going to just perpetually go so if you're in the i have to do it you're you start nitpicking everything about it that's the thing though with me like i have all kinds of hobbies i have all kinds of things that i do that i love but then eventually i get sick of it i get burned out on everything dude i'm like so fucking bored with this now and then i move on to something new and i'll come back to it eventually but it's just like i have a hard time sticking to one thing because it's like Oh, I can do this. Oh, now I can do that. Oh, you know, like I want to learn how to do this. So I like, I have a ton of things I can do and know right. how to do. And I like have a lot of skills and stuff, but then it's just like, I end up getting bored with it because like, well, I got good enough at this, you know, man. Right. But you know, I, I always wanted to do like blogging and content creation, but like you have to do on the same niche to the point where I'm like, I don't even think I want to do that anymore. So I'm like debating on what I want to do. Get burnt out on something you're passionate about or something you like and you know a lot about. Right. And so it's like, well, why don't you just take what you like and turn it into like a like an income? And it's kind of like, I just kind of like walking around aimlessly and fucking bullshitting with people aimlessly. How do you turn that into an income? I think you can do it. You, 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 you can. become homeless. I just, I just have and, to fucking do you it. You need like a, a reason to bullshit with them. I, like well, you need like a, a skill set I think to... I, well, I was going to say, not to interrupt you, I, but I, I feel like I need to walk around with a microphone and a camera and just start talking to people. Be like, hey, what's happening? You, you know, do you do anything important? Dude, what like, do you like? You, you know? can be on TikTok doing shit like that. Right. You see people do that and they have like a ton of followers. Like, you right. Can do that. So I could just start doing that. Just start microphone talking to people like, hey, hey, hey. You can do that like with talks. your Uber shit. 
I could like, just random people like kind of hey. like karaoke. What is that karaoke cab or some shit? Right, where you're except, like interviewing. But right, it's interviewing Uber. I don't know. Right, and I you know like interviewing your passengers and be like, hey, you know, like what do you do? Do you have any advice? Do you have certain things that you think is important to tell people? That's a Here good you idea. go, and then like I just get my p- passengers to fucking. Yeah, basically host my show. You could like have a sign on your car or something. Be like, if That's you want to participate in this, like, right. like let me know or something, you know. And then maybe you can just like randomly have passengers participating. Like, oh, I'll just turn my camera on right now, you know, and randomly have people. Right. I feel like I w- that would be fun. Like it, it would kind of like the cash cab, but it would be like the cash cab. the coach cab. It would be the coach cab because they're coaching, you know. Or they're just talking about whatever it is that's important to them. Like, what do you have any regrets? Things that you wish you would do different? Any like you got? Any, you want a bitch? Or like it would be like a what's what's the like a poetry slam? But it'd be like she's a like poetry so, slam in my Uber. Just picture she's like <laughs> some guy gets in there. She's like, so is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to unload? Completely safe zone. I just killed my wife. Call it like Uber off. Like they're like. And going just, off about whatever. I, I just too. killed my wife. That fucking cunt was a bitch. She was cheating on me with my brother, who was my twin. I just fucking stabbed the fuck out of her. Now you're witnessing. I'll kill you. No, not really. Well, that'd be cool up until that point. <laughs> I, I'd have to like tuck and roll. I'd be like, well, that's the, end, that's the end of. Uh... <laughs> and then your car's just like. <laughs> or you just get like you just get like the random like man. I just need to walk a shame. I screwed this chick. I have many regrets, but not many. It's been a long, dry time. It was a long time since I had I had a date, and she drove, she paid, and I had to get the hell out because I did not want to be waking up next to that man. You're a lifesaver. That's funny. Oh yeah. So did you want to know my like? Would you rather? Yeah, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, I have a couple of them actually. So, if a dick transplant was a thing, and you like met the hottest dude ever. But he needed a dick transplant, and it happened to be your dad's dick. Oof. Is that incest? <laughs> Would you fuck him? Is it incest? That's my Is question. Is it incest? I don't know. Like that's the question. So we're talking how, do you, how do you find out it's your dad's so, dick? So we talking about? Well, like you know, like your dad died, and this guy's like, "Well, I need a dick transplant, and here's a dick." So and we talk. Wait, wait. We're talking the dick and balls, or just the dick? I mean, yeah, both, I guess. Because if it's the dick and balls, that's definitely incest. Because that's like where the semen. Okay, made. let's just that's say the, that just the dick then. I why, why does that make? I it? don't think the balls would make it incest. Is I it think the balls would make it because um, you know the balls are inbreeding <laughs> if you have kids by them. But what would it would the your your so would you like knowingly fuck your dad's dick? I would not. If it was on I, like, I like if I'm it was on your dream person, you know, would, she's thought about this for a while. I'm not gonna. I don't want to unpack this too much with her. <laughs> See, Daddy issues. I think my thing would be like because there there would be more of a like oh he woke up and it was your dad's dick. I, I think it would like you know I think it would be. How like you would know that this is a thing that needs to be done, and then you would know that that's who the donor is, and you'd be like, "No, I think we need to wait." How about let's turn this? Like, no, same thing goes for your mom's vagina. I was about to say, let's turn this around. So, would you want to wake up tomorrow with your mom's vagina? In me? Yeah. (laughs) Like, if you needed the vagina transplant, I mean, why not? (laughs) Because if I needed a vagina transplant, I came from her. I came from that vagina, so it would like I mean if like Ron said, would it be eggs too? Like would it be like all of that, the like ovaries. ovaries and all that shit? Yeah. So it's like it would still be the same genes and shit, basically. I mean, I guess you have different DNA than like some different DNA than your mom or whatever, but like it would kind of man. Be she's like, got some mommy daddy issues but I, going but on I this feel week. Like, <laughs> But hey, I feel like this is just a funny thing I thought of at work because I wanted to know what you guys were going to say about it. But see, <laughs> when he, he's... No, I don't want to... Ariana, if he, you got my mom's vagina implanted and you know I do not want to fuck that. See, when he switched the... Well, see, that's just what it is. When he switched it, he's like, would you get your mom's vagina? So if you were to have kids, it's still your DNA. But if it was the dude's mom's vagina and you switched the ovaries and now it's her DNA, which right. is his DNA, would make it different. 
But see, that's what I was going to say. Would you? Would, let's just say you you have to have a dick transplant. This, your dick don't work, Ron. It's absolutely useless. Just fucking worthless piece of dick. Like it got cut off in a car accident or something. Right. Like you have no dick. It's like shredded and, up. And you have to choose between having no dick and having your dad's dick. That's the only dick. So only dick is a fucking match. <laughs> would, would you would you have your dad's dick? <laughs> uh, no, because I think pretty sure you said it's not working anymore. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I, I would uh, that that whole uh, trans thing. I might consider that before. You just have to become a woman. You'd be like, fuck. <laughs> Come on, it'd be, can, come, can on come on, come on, come on! your dick, Anne. Come on, girls. Wait, what I would be so great. It would be so great for us to be three girls together. Oh my goodness! What would your female name be? Rhonda. What were we talking about earlier? Can I suck your dick, Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> can I see, eat your pussy, Ron? <laughs> I guess we'll see. Yeah, he would totally. Would you just main? Would you still be Ron? Would you be Ron with the fucking full body hair, facial hair? Would you, you would just. Opt out of taking hormones, but just get the vagina instead because your dick got chopped off. So, I mean, based off conversations or, I've or had... would you just be like a flat, like a Ken with just a hole? be a flat. <laughs> just be a flat. Is that That's what we're going to call it? A flat. <laughs> You're just a flat. <laughs> are, are you male or female? I'm, just, I'm a flat. I mean, it's 2023. You could probably get away with that, right? I like it. I'm flat. I'm flat. <laughs> so I guess the first important question I, I is... you created a whole new sex. This is great. So yeah, you, you, you said that my... Gender. So yeah, definitely. You, you said that my dick's gone and useless. How about my balls? Are they still there? LBGTQ. It's important. It's important. <laughs> How's the balls? <laughs> You're saying this and saying it's important, and yes, I get this, but I'm picturing just balls hanging there. A flat? Well, like when they make, like back in the day when they what made... a hole? Just <laughs> And balls, balls hanging down. <laughs> so if the testicles were still there and still balls functional, I would be more inclined to get another dick installed rather than becoming a woman. So my second question off of my first question... Your balls are useless, Ron. Uh, okay, then yeah, I'm gonna you, go ahead and become a woman. You, you met your dream man, woman? and he has like the best body ever, but he had to have his uh, brain transplanted. But it's your dad's brain, so now he has your dad's personality. Would you go there? Is it your dad's? Is it? Is it your dad on the body of your dream man? Basically, yeah. Man, I, she's got some daddy issues today. I've, or your mom. I've, I mommy feel issues. Like I, I and no. I wouldn't because that would it, that would be a major clash. Which like, would be better, like fucking your dad's dick on like your dream guy, or dating your dream guy with your dad's personality? I, I feel like you can uh, block I, the penis out of your mind, <laughs> but like the mannerisms and everything else, you wouldn't be able to block oh out God, of your mind. Yeah. It, it, so like the your dad's brain in that guy's body, does he have all your dad's memories? Does he know you? He's your dad. See, I didn't think of it that. See, this that is like why that. I wanted to ask about. This Does he have your dad's memories? Does he know up. he's your dad, or does he have like all of that guy's because memories? I feel like he would have all the memories too. I would have trouble because if your dad is knowingly having sex with you, there's something yeah, wrong there. Yeah, that's fucked up. Like, I didn't think of it like <laughs> that, I'd, I'd Ronald. Like, no, well, now, not only will I not have sex with this, this body, but at the same time, I question you as a person, and I think you're a horrible person. You're no longer my dad. You're dead to me. You're done. Ariana's you new name is Daddy in Issues. My mind. You fucking died twice. Get out. Daddy Issues. <laughs> that's probably true. But... <laughs> But I just want, I knew this would be an interesting conversation. <laughs> like, I knew you guys would come up with interesting points and, like, I'm a flat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a flat. I'm a flat. <laughs> well, like, uh, what the hell was it? There was, like, a whole group of soldiers back in the day that would guard, like, the Sultan and, like, his wife. Um, one of those random stupid videos I watched. But basically, in order to, like, you know, to watch the Sultan and his harem, they would have to have themselves, you know, completely have all that shit removed. Balls, penis, all of it. Why would they so have they to? were flats. Oh, so they, they, yeah, wouldn't, they wouldn't, so be they wouldn't, wouldn't be tempted, you know, to go hook up with the Sultan's women. That sort of a thing. They were flats. Yeah, so they were flats. <laughs> and those guys were like, you know, hardcore soldier types. 
and like what the hell was the thing I saw? They used to carry like feathers with them, so that, like the flap there, they could like move it aside, so they could get to their pee hole and they could pee with the feather that they had to keep in their helmet. They would pee with the feather. So basically, basically, they would stick it in the pee hole and let it stream down the feather. Well, that and open the pee hole up from the flap. That's weird. From the flat. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you had no choice but you had to become a flat, would you just because for because just to be weird or like eccentric, would you just opt to have your nipples removed too? I think I would do that. I don't think so. I I, I, I keep them. So like, I feel like I I'm like genderless here. I'd keep the boobs. That's for sure. But just I'd not just, the nipples. Yeah, so, I'd nipples totally removed. So I'd be a flat. You'd be a double flat. Double flat. Yeah. So in, in that particular right, talking about Tinder dating earlier, there was a chick that I talked to years ago on one of the mm-hmm. dating apps. Don't ask me which one anymore. It might have been Tinder. It might have been Bumble. But the chick was cool. I talked to her for a little bit and was going back and forth. And at one point, she's like, "Hey, so." Um, I had tested this genetic thing for breast cancer and I had my breast removed. Okay. And she was like, here's a picture of what I look like topless. And I was just like, that's weird. And she's like, you're okay with this, right? I'm like, I uh, guess you did. Did you have cancer? No, I just had them removed. And it just, she felt very extreme about it. And I was like, okay. And I asked her to meet in person a few times, you know, let's go meet and get a dinner. What the hell? I'm not a complete dipshit. And I was like, I'm willing to accept. And she never did meet, but she kept sending me like topless pictures. And she had the breast remove along with the nipples. And it was a really weird looking picture because she had like, you know, what would have been boobs. And instead it was just like, you know, stitches down here with no nipples. Mm -hmm. Um, I I figure she would have at least left the nipples in there. You know, have them leave that in just so it looks slightly more normal. I think they usually take them off. Like everything I've ever, ever picture I've ever seen, I don't know that from they like, have nipples on them. From like mastectomy type but thing. But I feel like that's if they 100% had breast cancer. Maybe. I think if you wanted to get your well, if you want to get your boobs removed, you can get your nipples put on because that's what they do to trans men. But um. Well, I mean, I, th- I think Missy, maybe Missy, if guys you're worried nipples. about like right. If you're worried about a cancerous tissue, you can probably have them taken off. But I feel like there was somebody who they were they were like really weird, and I don't mean weird in a bad way. They just like you know like to stand out and like to do weird things, very eccentric. Because they had um, I, f- I forget just the, everything about them looked different. Like, but that was one thing they did to themselves. They had their nipples removed. They just wanted their nipples removed. They kept their boobs. But this this was somebody online, and it was like really neat looking. Not neat, and I don't know. It was like interesting. Like they just held themselves well. It's what they wanted. And it's like wow. Like you hold. Like I don't know. It was like weird, but at the same time, it was like okay, interesting. You got the confidence to flaunt it, I guess. It's right. okay. But it was really weird. So guys, um, what have we learned today? I know what I learned today. Flat daddy issues. <laughs> daddy issues. <laughs> I need to rename you in the phone to Daddy Issues. Oh, God. All right. I don't give a shit. I'll name you Ron's Pussy. <laughs> Ron's Vagina. Just call me Daddy. Ron's Daddy Pussy. I, li- I, I like the new sex that I... The, the, I like I, it, it, too. It, I would call it... See, gender is like basically what you feel you are versus sex is what you have in your pants. So you have male, female, and flats. Flats. That's, I like yeah. it. Gender neutral. <clears throat> flats. <laughs> <laughs> Completely unrelated, but sort of related. There is a new Transformers cartoon that is on Paramount Plus. I've been watching because I'm a fucking related. Nerd. Trans, it had so trans. Trans. No, no, no. It, 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 it totally is. Um, like they just put out new episodes and they added a new character that is a yeah. a trans transformer who likes to tell everybody that their pronouns are. They them. I remember you talking about. That. And I'm just like, I want to huh. see that character. I just, I, wanna, just like, I would like huh. to see that. <clears throat> and they like refused for action. like half of the series to because they were like a newborn transformer that had never transformed. They refused to pick like a alt mode to turn into for like ever in the thing. I'm like, that's funny. So they just were basically the robot form. Yeah. And they refused to have until like there was an emergency, and but they refused to have like any like definition that way. I thought that was kind of cool. Interesting. And that's like uh, so basically they wouldn't define what kind of transformer they were if they were. They like, wouldn't define what kind of transformer they were or their gender. Um, 
That's uh, that show is actively broadcasting on Nickelodeon. So this actually does have something to do with the conversation, they were not just a random, yeah, as wrong yeah. trying. I to just fit thought it in. I, I thought that was, change the subject. I thought right. that was one of those kind of a huh. That's kind of neat. That is that really they neat. went there. They have a flat transformer. That's cool. a flat. Yeah. Eventually, the, eventually the char- there was like an, a, an episode with an emergency, and eventually the characters turned into like a hawk or a owl or something. But that doesn't fucking matter. That's cool. That's my favorite thing that you've ever said. <laughs> Maybe not ever, but that's one of my favorite things you've said. A flat. A flat. <laughs> well, that is what we've learned today. Uh, this has been misbehavior. Did we? Rate no, we did this? not. No. What rate the Guinness, oh, okay. kids? It's um, a Guinness. I'm gonna give her a four because she's a Guinness. I, a four. I, I give it a four because it's for a regular beer. It's a good ass regular beer. She's a Guinness. She's gonna be what she's gonna be. Guinness has been around a long time. Ugh. It's and stout. They're gonna keep being around a long time. Four, four, four. And the bottle itself does talk about. It says mm-hmm. intense. Characterful and bold. So we've, I'm bold. Guinness Extra Stout is the pure expression of our brewing legacy. Bittersweet, which it is. Subtle dark. hint of hops, dark fruits, and caramel. Bitter. This stout is a testament to great brewing. Stout, dark, bitter, anything else? Call it bittersweet. They were right on that. Bittersweet. That, that, when you were, like when you were going through like naming cherry. all the flavors, that's why I started smiling because I don't think about the, those on the on the guess. I'm just like, it's a Guinness. Amber that's funny. It, it mentioned fruits. It mentioned caramel. <laughs> <sighs> so uh, I would like to just say we are on all your favorite podcast services. We're on YouTube. We got some stuff on TikTok. Please find us. Like, si- like, subscribe, share. Misbehavior. Tell your friends. Misbehavior. Misbehavior. Tell your friends. Tell your wife. Tell your kids. Tell your wife's kids. Hell, I don't care. Tell them all. Like, subscribe, share, and send us messages on Facebook if you think we're stupid. Tell the flats. Send our dick pics. Send your flat pics. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>